Hi there, it's Mike Madge again with SaleJuice.com, and this is part three of our series work with Ron Sherry, five-time world champion, builder of top ice boating equipment in the world. And uh, today's session, we're going to be concentrating more on the different, uh, sorry, the different planks and the different masts he builds. So welcome back, Ron, and appreciate you spending some time with us here today. And maybe you can start us with uh, the different masts you build and uh, what they're used for in terms of what's the difference between them? Well, uh, um, at Composite Concepts, we uh, have uh, joined in forces with offshore spars, and now we're making a, a new mast that is a uh, pre-preg mast. And it's actually uh, pre-carbon fiber that's been pre-impregnated with thermal activated epoxy. And we wrap this carbon fiber around an aluminum mandrel in a specific oriented uh, directions to control the bend. And uh, it's cellar wrapped, it's vacuum bagged, it's put into an autoclave and cured at 30 PSI and uh, um, 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, it's uh, the, you know, it's the stuff they're making the space shuttle out of. Well, I don't make space shuttles anymore, but you know what I mean? It's a, uh, it's the most high tech stuff you can possibly get. So, uh, but you know, I've made masts for years and years. I have uh, at Composite Concepts, we've built and sold about 1,100 masts. And uh, since 2010, we've been making the quill. This mast here is called the quill or quasi isotropic laminate. And with this mast, uh, I had some problems with some failures. And I went to the Goujon brothers uh, and we uh, brought uh, some mass pieces up there and they put them in some different spectrographs and all types of high tech machines and figured out some issues that I was having. So uh, we came up with a, a new process for making the mast. And uh, since 2010, all these quills I made, I haven't had any failures. Um, if you can kind of zoom in on this, this is cutoffs from a quill. So this is what the quill looks like at the bottom. And this is what the quill looks like at the top. So uh, there's, uh, I have three different styles of the quills. I have what we call the little rebel, which is made for like hundred pound sailors. And then I have a, a Wendell and a Griffin, which are made for like 135 pound sailors in that range. And then the standard quill, which goes from uh, you know, 185 pounds up. So the masts are also sold depending on like uh, if the skipper is not super strong, he would probably want a softer mast. And then depending on the skipper's weight, which type of, which style of mast you want to buy. So, but since then we um, have upgraded and you can see here, this is the uh, new pre-preg mast. And um, this one is the mast that I just used to, to win the nationals, the U.S. nationals, and uh, this is Ria's mast. This is a softer version of the same mast for uh, you know 125 pound person, and she happened to like the sparkles, so uh, she got holographic sparkles. Came over here and sanded the mast, and then we we put clear coat on the mast and sprinkled the uh, pixie dust in there, and uh, made her mast, and it is a a big crowd favorite, of course, Rhea is really the big crowd favorite at the, uh, at the U.S. Nationals. Everybody really loved it. So, but looking at the, uh, the, uh, the quill mast, or not the quill mast, but the prefreg mast, you can kind of see that the, uh, it's a really nice, clean mast. I mean, you can really control what goes on the mast as far as fiber content. You can see that this mast is also actually all carbon fiber. So, uh, um, uh, but it's very controlled as far as the layup schedule goes so that we have the right fibers in the right location. Chris Clark did a finite analysis on the, uh, um, on the mass bend and what causes the mass to bend. And he determined that it's all about the angle of the head state to the mast. So you, and all the load goes on the mast, the compression goes on the mast from the hound to the base. So it's really important to control the laminate from the hull pound to the base to get the deflection that you uh, that you want to have. So um, so that's what we've worked on over the times. 
Now you can see the, uh, the quill mast has a hound like this. The quill mast is thicker. So uh, it's, uh, the quill mast comes out right close to minimum weight. So you don't have to do anything too fancy and the minimum center gravity is spot on. So that's all worked out really well. And this is the base that we put on the, uh, on the quill. On the, uh, um, the pre-preg mast, the mast comes out at only 11 pounds and the minimum weight on the mast is 15 pounds. So we had to make a, a, a much more robust hound for the mast because this is nice and heavy. And that you, we, we engine, it was well engineered by Eric Smith so that we could get the mast up to minimum weight and achieve minimum center of gravity. And this is the base that goes on. You can see the extra metal here. This fits right in the mast at the base, and then this hound goes up at the hound, and then we're able to uh, uh, have the mast come out at minimum weight. And if they're a little bit light, what he came up with was being able to put this screw on here, and we can add different washers so that we're able to adjust the minimum center of gravity and the minimum weight uh, uh, of the mast at the same time and get the mast to, be, uh, um, to fit the rules really well. And then what he also... Eric Smith got me is this threaded rod that I put on here and I use this to push the hound in from the top and then the hound comes out right here. Um, the old mast, the hound, um, uh, um, we were having trouble with the holes elongating and it was just 3 16 So we made the new hounds uh, on the new mast a quarter inch thick with a 5 16 bolt. Just made that a little bit more robust. We could afford the weight and um, we just want the, the mass to last forever. So uh, this has worked really well. And you can see after all the racing that the holes are still just fine. There's been no elongation whatsoever. Um, they work really good. And uh, yeah, he also, uh, so, and he also just, Eric Smith got me this, uh, um, it's basically an Allen wrench. So I can slide this into the mass with the bolt and put this bolt on or off and adjust, you know, put more or less washers on and have the mass, you know, meet the minimum center of gravity. There's some other builders that are kind of complaining about that kind of stuff, but uh, haven't put lead in their mass and hopefully they are. But uh, I can guarantee that all of my masks are legal. This right here is my Bible and I have got all 1000 masks. Every mass gets checked for uh, the hound height minimum center of gravity, minimum weight, and dimensions, fore and aft and side to side, and length, and like I said, the hound height. So it's all written down. Every single mast is measured before it leaves this shop. I don't want to put anything out there that isn't legal. So, and then with the, this is a hound for holding the shrouds. And um, this is a Strubel hound that Matt came up with. And when you ma ma bend the mast that far, when you get the side stays out to the side a little bit, it helps rotate the mass in between tacks. The mass tends to have a little bit of memory and want to stay bent one way. So when we get the, uh, um, I'm going to kill Marley. Mm -hmm. the, uh, um, so this helps rotate the mass through the tacks and jives. When you had the triangle where the shrouds are just right here, a lot of times it was hard to get the mass to rotate. Well, this makes sure that the mass rotates over. Now with the new masts, uh, Eric Smith machined a titanium hound. So you can see how much cleaner and smaller it is and more aerodynamic. And uh, with these hounds, we have to have a toggle at the top because of the way the mast rotates so you don't kink your shroud. This one, the hound actually rotates so you don't have to worry about having the, the uh, um, toggles at the top. You can just go nice clean forks and uh, it's really super clean and aerodynamic. There you so uh, right now we have just I just had the two uh, mass designs, you know, for the lighter weight skippers and then the standard one for the uh, heavier weight skippers. And the, the new standard mast is uh, a, just a teeny bit stiffer than a, a Griffin or Wendell. And uh, it's a little bit softer than a standard quill. And that seems to be working really well for uh, a lot of sailors. And then we have this mast that we built for Rhea that is made for the lighter sailors. So I really just have two designs right now make, you know, out of the, uh, for the pre-preg masks.
So, but it's all engineered. There's extra layers put on in the sweet spot, which is the center between the hound and the base to uh, keep the mass from failing. There's extra uh, 90 degree fibers in the hoop direction. So the sidewalls can't collapse. Uh, so it's all very well engineered to keep the mass from failing. And so far it's been all good. Every huh. mass can fail. Don't let anybody fool you. I mean, if you can sheet a boat of say a mast off just about any boat, you know, just because it can bend doesn't mean that you should just keep bending it. A lot of bend is not faster. Just having the mast just out of column, maybe about a foot, that's when you're going to go the fastest. When you start seeing that two feet out of column, you better ease the sheet or you're going to be buying yourself a new mast. No mast can take that for long. It's going to break down if you bend the mast that far. And it's just not fast. The sail shape is not designed for a mast that's on it, got two feet of bend in it. So. So I got a question for you, Ron. Uh, on our last yeah. video, uh, we had Matt Struble looking at a couple boats going upwind, and we were comparing the stiffness of the mass, and one was soft and one was stiffer. Uh, how do you know when it's too soft, too stiff? And these masks, I mean, you obviously have a range of, of uh, adjustments that you can make to, to stiffen them or soften them, right? Yeah, I mean, there's... There's the, the range of adjustment is, you know, on the boat, uh, you can adjust the mass step, the further forward you put the mass step, the more you decrease the mass rate further back, and that ends up decreasing the angle of head state to the mass, that'll put more compression on the mass and make it bend. All this stuff is very well explained in my tuning guide, so you can uh, use all that stuff. I mean, you definitely want to have your mask be able to pop out. It's a, a very strange phenomenon how these uh, DNs work, but it, it seems like to me that uh, when the mask gets popped out sideways like that, you end up starting to get like a windsurfer, a little bit of lifting moment. The old mask with a straight mask, it'd be, you'd have to let the side stays and everything way out and the mask would be way off to the side and you get a lot of down pressure and you can kind of make the boat work that way. But with the new mass and you get that bend and you are able to still get the bend with having the mass more straight up and down, I think it actually has a bit of a lifting component in the rig. And then I saw the boat gets actually a little bit lighter and that's why we're achieving such ridiculously high speeds and being able to point higher upwind and lower downwind. Wow. So. Well, well that was excellent. Does that Robbie. help you? Yeah, very, very good. Th thanks again for, for sharing us all your knowledge with that. And we appreciate that. And uh, hope so let's look at runner planks real quick. How's that? Uh, okay, let's get into your rush. Sure. Let's go for it. Real quick. Um, I just want to show you this is uh, what I'm building as my, my standard runner plank. This has five sixteenths ash skins and a, uh, a spruce core. And then the 5 16 skin on the bottom as well. And uh, these planks are, uh, the crown is forced in at 18 inches from the end so that there's a little bit of going. You can't really see it, but when the plank bends, it goes down in the middle and the ends stay more straight up and down, which gives you uh, uh, more uh, 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 alignment, in a, a better alignment and a wider range of deflection of the plank. So... But this plank is solid wood. It's, you know, a little bit heavier than minimum weight. And uh, where's that piece? Oh, right here. So when I went over to the Worlds in 1982 to Klein Wittensee, Germany, I met Endel and Vico Vorma. Endel uh, told me that when I make a plank, that I must make it like a tree. So you can see at the grain that I try to recreate the tree when I put these planks together. Every time I use the grain uh, on the skins and on the core to try to make sure that the, the plank is remade like a tree. So, and now we're coming to the more uh, state of the art plank. This is the new arrow plank that Eric Smith and I and Chris Clark, you know, uh, helped out with some of this that we came up with. And uh, you can see that this plank is big. We made it flat on the bottom where the chalks hit it, and then flat on the top where the hull hits it, and we have a nice transition that goes in between. The plank is made with a, a balsa core, and you can see if you look at the end here, 
You can see in the end, there's a keyed in ash like this. Where the whole planktons go on of ash as well, so that the, we have strength in the plank. So, and then this plank goes into uh, clamshell mold, top and bottom mold, and uh, gets laid up with ProSet resin, just like the quill mass uh, from West Systems Epoxy. And, uh, and after we get it all wet out and put in the mold, we put it into the oven and uh, cure it at 140 degrees. A, uh, a really amazingly nice plank, very lightweight. Some of the plank, on Griffin's plank, we made a little, cause he was a little lighter. We had to add a little weight to it to make it hit minimum weight. So uh, this is the newest, latest and greatest. Um, I'm very excited about these planks, of course. A uh, little more expensive because you have to get the uh, the core CNC machine, and uh, and then it gets all put together and put into the mold all at the same time. So you come out with a beautiful product, and uh, so um, and this plank as well has a slight amount of going uh, to it, so that uh, I guess I can tip this one up too. So you can kind of see. And of course, I'm using the Struble chalks. On the plank, here's a struble chalk. So you can kind of see the, the technology involved in the struble chalk. Um, these are really well engineered chalks. You can see that the chalk walls get thicker by the root than they are at the top. And that really makes the chalk lots different, along with this gusset that keeps the chalk from bending. So that works out really, really good. And uh, I also supply runner liners. You can just see these things right here. You use these, the runner sits in this, these blocks and this goes against your pivot bolt. So you can check to see that your runners are aligned. And the nice thing about this fixture is that it not only makes the runners uh, parallel to each other, it makes them perpendicular to the boat. And uh, it's amazing. You can see the little key right in here and the string just goes out into this key right here to line up. And I mean, you can just tap the runner and get this string to move a little bit just by tapping it so it's incredibly accurate and uh, so uh, that's something else that we offer so we can get our runners aligned and uh, that's a whole nother segment runner alignment we'll work on that some other time yeah. but I just wanted to show you guys uh, all uh, what's available and some of the new technology at composite concepts and uh, I hope you enjoyed it I want to thank Mike Mash for hosting this and giving me this opportunity and uh, the size boat stuff is what I do if anybody has any questions please feel free to call or email me. You can get all the information you need from the website, iceboatracing.com. Any other questions, Mike? No, that was great, Ron. We appreciate all the time and effort you spend in it. And, and, and it obviously, you know, you get results. I mean, that's good stuff. I mean, you, you, you build it and you make it work. So good for you and uh, keep it up. And, and thanks again for helping everybody out with all your information. We really appreciate that. Yeah, I really want to uh, thank people of help me over the years and the, the main people are uh, Chris Clark and Paul Goodwin, uh, uh, John Harper uh, that uh, really helped us all and, and Chip Cartwright all in the beginning when we were developing composite concepts and all these uh, new parts and uh, especially now Eric Smith and Eric Smith has been uh, only racing ice boats now for three years and came in third in the U.S. Nationals which is just amazing and he won a race. Um, so so happy for him and thankful. He's only mad at me because I he's really mad at me because uh, we did our first Mackinac race together when we were teenagers, and uh, he's like, "Why didn't you tell me about this sport earlier?" He's he loves it so much. Yeah, so it's been, uh, kidding. You know, yeah. the, the ice boat is kind of like crack. You know, be careful because it's very <laughs> addicting. When you get out there on a good day, it's very hard to not to get yourself some equipment. So, <laughs> absolutely. Um, if I can help, get yourself a used boat, put it together come to Ron to get some new components every year and we'll, or a complete boat. Glad to help you out. So thank you. Thank you.